in the past I used to get, well, tools and make sculptures from them and now I make sculptures and use them as tools to produce <laughs> prints or to, to do something else. Well, this set of geometry in a way, it, it's become a kind of a vehicle for other ideas and for other processes. The first set of um, of modular sculptures that I produced were the um, the rubber objects, and it struck me that I'd ac what I'd actually made was large printing blocks, and all I had to do was ink them up and stamp them onto a piece of paper, and it was absolutely what I had in my mind. If it were a perfect graphic black block, it would be quite a dead space. There's something to find in that kind of Im imperfect texture. When I produce a sculpture in the room, that obviously has to deal with gravity and, and all the rest. But when I produce an image on the floor, the thing floats. The image suggests an object that's a very different shape. Um, it suggests depth that's not there in the 3D object. All of those sculptures are based on um, an isometric geometry and that produces a kind of a f sort of a fake perspective, a kind of forced perspective. So it allows these, these printed um, images, sculpt kind of sculptural images to look, yeah, to look like they have depth. I developed systems that were very strong, geometries that were difficult to argue with, geometries that worked under many, many circumstances. And I used materials that supported that. But now that I've got that system in place, it's really nice to start to tease it apart and start to add other forces or other objects or push these things to, to perform in a way that I hadn't initially designed them to perform. And part of that is the, the new sculptures for the, the exhibition at Baltic 39. When they're finally installed outside, they get covered in paper, like fly poster paper. So this is pasted on and it, it covers all the, all the seams. It, um, I guess it unifies the object in a way. But what it also does is provide a kind of a, a, a more porous and fragile surface that can accept damage and it can, it can quickly weather, it can quickly be affected and changed. The structure underneath is raw, mild steel, it's completely untreated and so it will rust, it will deteriorate, but it will deteriorate in certain ways that I can't predict or in ways that I could predict but I choose not to. Once these things have been outside for a while I then go and dismantle them and in that process I cut the, the paper at, at all the seams, take apart all the objects, take them indoors and reassemble them in the same initial form. But the parts being interchangeable are interchanged so they end up in different places. When it's cut and flipped and turned suddenly you get a really sharp edge and something that looked almost invisible becomes incredibly visible. The light from the new video illuminates the new sculpture. When the video begins, when the first tubes are taken out, there are fine cracks that are made visible. The cracks in both systems kind of illuminate each other, I think. The title of the show is um, Paper Over the Cracks. And there's kind of two ways you can do that. You can be, you can cynically paper over the cracks to hide something. But you can also paper over the cracks with optimism. And I think artists do that a tremendous amount. It's a methodology that keeps things, it keeps things positive and it keeps you looking forward and it keeps you kind of producing. I think there's something to be said about papering over the cracks and then pulling back the paper later.